Good morning. Morning. Hello, hello. How are you, Emily? Um, I'm good, tired. Um, mm -hmm. I just uh, I finished the meditation about like an hour ago. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I don't I don't feel like talking to anyone today. I don't know, just yeah, just kind of tired and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, kind of more more inwards and yeah. yeah introspective and yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice hello Maria hello soul how are you doing today Maria Ah, uh, pretty good. Yeah, I did my morning meditation and uh, it was really easy to concentrate, but I felt really um, like um, really uh, bored, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm with the body scan i don't know why i have so much difficulties with that it's mm -hmm. easy to concentrate but i get really bored mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's easy to to stay with it but you're you're kind of like it's not so interesting you're kind of like ah oh, i know this or it's just the same thing yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that is a is a tricky one. It's more uh, it's more subtle than the kind of obvious things of like uh being irritated or being restless or like just dreaming about other stuff. The boredom is more a subtle form of uh, state of mind that that kind of uh, is manifesting and. Um, yeah, the I feel for me what really helps with the boredom is really to see if it, I can because usually when we're bored a little bit we're not really looking closely we're kind of like ah I know this we're kind of like looking at the experience with this lens of I know this already and that's why it's boring because the same thing um, and the things are kind of neutral the sensations are a bit neutral not no not much pain not much pleasure um and to see if you can tune then into um or like to see if you can push a little bit the attention to um be more um aware and kind of cut the time into thinner slices if that makes sense so to sometimes we just oh okay five seconds five seconds and we're kind of aware once during these five seconds but see if you can really be more aware like every second like every second every second there's kind of this flashing of consciousness onto the experience of of the of the sensations and you'll find that actually when you look more closely at that it is changing. It is changing in every moment, the sensation. If we look closely. Um, okay, I will try that. And um, yeah, recognize recognize this boredom. Recognize this boredom as a state of mind, and learn about it. Like see the 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 qualities that that it brings in terms of your the level of energy in your mind, the level of attentiveness, the level of fullness, and also noticing when that boredom is not there, maybe in the next session or after or something. So see how it fluctuates. This, this is also helping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
Do you have something else also? Okay. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I accidentally pressed the unmute. <laughs> Um, yeah, and has anyone would like to share anything or check anything or just, yeah, just share about the experience and the meditation and then, okay. Um, I want to, I want yes. to say something. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Hello. Um, no, just, I want just to share um, my experience in the last uh, meditation. Obviously, every every meditation is different, of course, and in my case, it depends of of the day or the night. But um, I'm struggling lately to uh, detach the emotion that uh, my mind, that is not mine, but well, <laughs> relates to the feeling in the body. Uh, so do you have any tip or advice to yeah to not get involved into any emotion from the from the feeling in the body? Can you give an example of how it happens? Uh, I don't know, maybe yeah, maybe I feel something in my in I I don't know how to say in English this part, but the beginning of the stomach. Mm -hmm. Uh, some um, feeling there, discomfort. Uh, I don't react to the discomfort because it's not a reaction. I feel the, I can feel the sensation, but my mind, rather than thinking in something, is feeling an emotion through, from that sensation. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? For example, mm -hmm. the emotion that, that, was this morning from this stomach discomfort was like a kind of sadness for example mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i don't know if you have some advice or tips to detach us from the emotion yeah, because yeah. that is the mind obvious obviously that is the mind trying to analyze the the feeling of the body with the five sense and re and trying to relate that feeling with that emotion that is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Some, sometimes I, I, this, that is my difficulty in, in the meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, um, <coughs> we have the different sensations in the body, and, and sometimes there is some associated states of mind with that. So, sometimes there's some sadness or some anxiety, or so mind and body are very closely interrelated as you probably know, and they're kind of constantly in influencing and interacting with each other. And so the when we feel different sensations on the body, especially more the pleasant or unpleasant ones, they also tend to create uh, some states of mind or, or the mind uh, associates something with it. And sometimes it's some memory or perception or thought, or sometimes it's more just, just more the raw emotion. Um, and also, so what we're doing here to working on the level of sensations on the physical body, we're also working with the mind because the two are not separate. So we can recognize them as separate things, but they are, the two are so interconnected that, that we are in Vipassana meditation, we're working with both. And the, you might also be able to feel that this feeling in the mind has some sensation. It's like there's there's maybe the story, the thought about it, like more like self self talk or some imagination or something. But there's also a feeling, a feeling of anxiety, a feeling of sadness, the kind of sensation, the sensory experience of that, along with along with the sensation of the, the primary object, like what you are focusing on, like the belly. And that sensation is actually also appearing in the body somewhere else. So you might feel here this, uh, this thing in the belly, with the upper belly. 
And then maybe there's also some feeling of sadness. So you're recognizing that in the mental level, but also there's sensation somewhere in the body. Like maybe there's something in the throat or, or in the shoulders or in the spine, or the chest, heart. Sometimes in the heart more with sadness, especially. Um, and it is another sensation in the body. And, and so if you're working in the level of feelings and the level of the sensation of those things, you're continuing to practice Vipassana. So you continue to recognize the sensation of the body, the sensation of the mind, and you continue just to be aware of it and not, not to, and to kind of accept it and to, to not push and pull on it, not to want to change it and just let it be. And, and uh, it will come and go by itself. Is that uh, clear? Yes, thank you. So, something else. So it's not like wrong to put in those words. Wrong to so feel something in the body and then relate that with anxiety or sadness. Uh, if we if we don't attach to that really. Yeah, that's right. So, so it's, 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 it's part mm -hmm. of. It's part of the feeling. It's part of the feeling. That yes. sensation in the body, plus, uh, equal anxiety, for example, is just part of the, the package of the feeling. That yeah, might yeah, have yeah. to be with. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just the package of the. I mean, it's possible to go deeper and just dissect it actually, and to recognize the mental component, the physical, the, the body component of. Yeah, yeah. Of that. And um, but as it is. I mean, every actually everything you're experiencing is is the is part of it. It's all part of the process. And um, but instead of thinking about, we are feeling. We are feeling the sensation of the things okay. as they are changing. Understood. Okay. Thank great. you. Great. Uh, great question. Someone wrote in the chat here. Um, question about leg numbness. Is a question of practice or technique. Legna still exists after several, I guess, years of practice. Techniques to relieve leg numbness. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it is both for sure. It is it is the way the posture you sit in, finding that that right posture for you. But you can only do so much with the posture. So sometimes that, uh, yeah, the leg numbness still still is appearing, and especially if the if the position is 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 more at the limit of your flexibility um so to find a posture where maybe the numbness or the discomfort doesn't come so quickly but maybe only after 20 30 minutes and then usually after if it comes after 20 30 minutes then it's more like just um they're part of it Whereas if it comes like quite straight away, then you need to find a posture which working better for you. Um, so with leg numbness, especially it can be, maybe the knees are really bent or kind of twisted or something. So to, to really elevate the hips, they can really, you can sit on something like this thick and um, like those, those beautiful meditation cushions with like, um, yeah, sand in them or little particles and they kind of, rather than a, than a soft sofa cushion, which you would just sink down into. Or to elevate the knees a little bit. So maybe I can here demonstrate my one piece tissue. Um, so to really sit on something and then if you have the knees here, you can really put something underneath and knees to, to kind of prevent them from um, being too in this open position. And yeah, playing a little bit with that and, and how it how it can how you can find a way. And of course your general level of kind of fitness, mobility. Your, your health of your circulatory system, your nervous system will also play into, into that. So in, in general, if people have like background in movement, like I have some 
dancer friends who came to Vipassana and, and they experienced very little pain because they worked a lot already with their body, working a lot with these different tensions and things um, versus someone who, who does, hasn't really moved for a few years. It's going to be more difficult. In yoga, actually, they do. I mean, yoga originally was a, just a preparation for sitting meditation so you can sit longer and stiller. I actually experienced some resistance this morning. I felt like the um, um, the meditation was hard work. Like that's yeah. kind of what came to mind. Um, because I was, the thoughts were like, oh, not again, you know, not scanning again the whole body. It's like hard, it seems like hard work. Mm -hmm. And also I think because it's not guided, guided as much, um, mm -hmm. so there is a lot of like, silence and um just you know um, scanning on my own so mm -hmm. i found that really really difficult <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah it can it can be really because we're really using the faculty of attention and to continue to attend to something and this is this is quite exhausting for the mind. So the mind is kind of like, no, I don't want to do this. And it's like a task. But actually the, the effort or the, or the work aspect of it should be really light. So the, the effort or the, the, the huge effort or the huge um, determination that we bring to meditation is actually to do nothing. So the hardest part is to do nothing. And by doing nothing, I mean just to be aware and, and not go into the usual things that the mind does. Um, and this is the, the great effort is to, to do nothing. And with the body scan, you can maybe ease up a little bit how you are, how intensely you are doing it. Like, especially if you sit down and you kind of like, okay, this whole, I have to get through this whole body and um, let's do it. And here's, here's my plan. And okay, I'm going to go through and it's going to be really good and very small parts. And more just forget about trying to have like this, keep this frame in mind of, of what you need to do, but just start with the moment. Okay, what is here right now? Okay, the head. Okay. Okay, and what's next? What's here right now? The neck. And to not see it as something that you, some huge thing that you need to complete or do, but just a moment. I'm just aware every moment of sensation in the body. And yeah, I follow kind of this, this rough order. But my job is to be aware of the moment and not to complete anything or, or, or uh, succeed anything. or um, Yeah. Oh, thank that you makes so sense. Much. yeah that brings like it already feels different in the body just you know mm -hmm. listening to um uh, to your answer thank you so much um is it okay if i then also maybe mix up the order like you know that that's probably the mind again wanting to have like clear structures and then forgetting them uh you know like tiny things in the order of scanning the body that's fine isn't it if i mix it up yeah, the principle is just that you you continue to cultivate the awareness everywhere in the body, so not to miss body parts, but whether you start from left and go right, or whether you uh, start from the back and go in the front, or whatever, is doesn't matter. Um, actually, yeah? You know, would it also be okay to do it maybe instead of in the evening, the second one, do it in the afternoon? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Just... We, for this course we're just doing the two hours and you can do whenever okay thank you whenever it works mm -hmm. thank you so much mm -hmm. yeah this, this is really interesting this topic of like uh the hour meditation and how how actually because we we're thinking about this hour of meditation 
how actually we build the tension to get through this hour when the easiest thing to do is just to relax and be aware of the moment and then the hour goes somehow as a byproduct without us thinking about the hour, hour that needs to be uh, mastered or gone through but just to realize continuously realizing and being aware in the moment the mind doesn't think anymore about time and it passes whereas if we maintain this idea this concept of the time and how much time is left and, and i have to get through it and i have to focus and tense in order to make it that that tension in itself is actually what brings the uh, the suffering um, so maybe you can check that out Um, so someone asking about chantings. Mm, I would not recommend it for the meditation period in the chantings because they are they are nice and they feel nice and but they are also somehow this it's more of like a concentration exercise to listen to chanting. Your, some of your conscious experience will be taken up by that chanting and so it feels easier because you you kind of need to just do the scanning a bit more lightly and that that can be okay it can be nice and can be and be easier actually um but we want to try to bring or intend to at least bring all of our conscious experience into the sensation in order to go deeper into it you'll probably find that if you do the chanting with it it will be more easier to stay with it, but you won't feel as deeply because uh, there's some some limited bandwidth, let's call it, of 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 conscious experience, and part of that is taken up by the by the processing and the listening to the chanting. Um, so, in the pure vipassana sense, then I would say, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Vipassana meditation is really a time every day where you take away anything extra, no extras. And you're just aware of the moment. And this is the priority. And it's not about breathing exercise, it's not a movement exercise or a posture exercise. It's just we're cultivating, we're exercising the faculty of bare awareness of our sensory experience. Okay, what else is there? Would anyone like to share anything maybe about if they notice anything different in their experience in daily life? Outside of the meditation. Um, I noticed I make different choices, which is really interesting. Like I'm much more kind of in tune with myself and I feel like I'm for example yesterday I um, I think I now feel that yesterday I had too much communication with people and I really feel it today um, and um, today uh, because it's um, it's my birthday 
Oh, happy birthday, Emily. <laughs> Um, I feel like um kind of pulled in all different directions and all I want to do is just switch my phone off and just kind of like just be with myself. Mm. So it's kind of interesting. Like I feel that I have a more of a feeling for myself and like that I'm nervous before talking and normally I I thought I'm someone who's quite confident and I really feel it much more, all of these things, which is super interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, well, it's your birthday, so it's your day. Do what you want, what you need. And um, yeah, and maybe about that is like, so we're becoming more aware of, of this, these things and how we interact with them and by, by really feeling the body of it, the, the body component of it. We see the the things that create more balance and the things that create less balance. And it's not to just avoid anything which unbalances us. No, for sure we can go and talk and enjoy and thing, but we see it. We see how it how it is affecting the, the body mind. And we can then take wise choices to to um yeah, okay, maybe today, then, then a bit less, and then allowing it to come back to balance, as it always does. And uh, yeah, not, not heaping on more, more stuff, more tension, but just always allowing it to come back to balance. What do I need? Yeah, thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. Yeah, the balance is a lovely word. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyone else about that topic or something else? Yeah, I just want to say something. Um, I'm practicing uh, what you said to me, um, this pause in between activities, like little pause, little to make like a transition in one activity to the other activity that I have to do in the day. Mm -hmm. Even if it is just for five minutes, you know what I mean? And doesn't require to be like one hour of, of transition or of, or of, um, of pause. Mm -hmm. and to be honest, it's a very nice tip. It, it, it's helping me a lot. Uh, and also not only in the uh, physical activity, just for example, I'm thinking in something because I have to do something, no? I'm thinking. And yeah, rather than jumping into another topic that I have to also think, uh, I make a pause just maybe helping me with breathing or whatever, or just being in the present moment, like if I were meditate, if I if I was meditating, and then I start with the other topic that I had to think or activity that I have to do, and it's a super simple tip, but I never thought that way, <laughs> like to do transition and pause in between stuff, and it's really helping me. So, and it's helping me to concentrate more in the in the meditation also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really wonderful. I'm I'm happy that you are that you try to implement it. Um, yeah, it's such a simple thing, but can be very powerful just to have this. And just to recap for for the other people there, I was saying about just to, whenever you switch activity, and um, whether it be on a physical level, okay, I switch from doing my dishes to, to working or to go outside of the house, or I switch mental activity, as you were saying, like, okay, I switch from being on this call to, uh, to working on 
some emails I need to need to create, but I just give some space in between, a space of nothing, a space of a rest. Um, a rest may be where I start actually noticing more the moment. Um, and it's a bit like what, what Emily was saying about just giving a bit of space for the things to return to balance, for the things to sort out again. And then we start from there. And then, wow, the, that simple thing can have so much power in that next activity because we start empty. We start more, more at ease, more relaxed, and then we can go, go deep again and focus into the, the thing and much better rather than carrying and having the residual of the last thing with us. Residual tension, residual, uh, whatever it was. And then bringing that already into the next thing. Um, so this is just really wonderful. And yeah, all these, all these little tips and tricks, they are all things you can investigate for yourself and find your own techniques, find your own tips and tricks uh, that, that kind of make your life better. Like all these things you can, sometimes you hear about something, like I heard about this trick, read it somewhere. Okay, I tried it for myself. Okay, what works, what doesn't work for me? Um, and and then that's the wisdom. That's the wisdom growing the understanding of how this thing works, this mind and body, and what it needs. And sometimes I can, and it's also okay if it doesn't go perfect. I, I know how to accept it. I know how to be with that. But I'm also learning better how to work with this mind and body. And developing the awareness. Okay, there's something in the chat. Scanning every part of my body from upper to bottom or opposite. So could I just scan the part that gives me the signal? I found how to scan the every parts of my body. Yeah, so it, it is it is important to also so there's when you go through the body, there's going to be more pl places where there's more obvious signal sensation. Um, and some parts of the body are more blank, more fuzzy, or we cannot feel. So it's important to balance. So not just to stay the whole time with the most obvious thing because then we don't develop this more subtle awareness of also being able to pick up more subtle things. But also, yeah, being, being aware of the whole spectrum of from gross to a subtle, from obvious to subtle. Um, and yeah, this, this can be hard because you're trying to feel something that maybe you can't quite feel yet. So it's like expanding the power of attention it's like uh, you are, yeah, you are kind of looking closely at something where you can't see it so clearly, but just in that act of looking at it or intending to see what is there more, the mind allocates more uh, power to that. And it's like, it can, you can start to see more of that through time, but we can't force it. Um, Would laying down be fine for the body scan? Um, can be, if you have skill in it. Um, what tends to happen when you are laying down is that you drift off more easily because there's energy in the body. The nervous system goes into more this rest mode and um, it's easy to start dreaming, to start drifting. But... All in all, we have to practice the awareness in all postures, in walking and sitting and standing and in lying. Some are just a bit more helpful or bad. And that's why we have this cross-legged position. It kind of balances the level of energy with the level of calm, with the level of kind of activation also in the body, attentiveness and relaxation. Um, and so, yeah, in lying, it, it can be difficult. You can, you can try it. For sure, but you and investigate how it how it works. But uh, yeah, it can be it can be more challenging, and and also not to just oh I'm sitting or oh, I feel some discomfort. Okay, I'm gonna lie down for five minutes and sit back up and then lie down, and just keep playing this game of 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 changing, <laughs> and not not just staying with what what is coming. So that's important. So that's a long answer. Um, 
Yeah, I like to give the long answer, the all the information, like it's more complicated rather than just, okay, just do like this or just do like this. But I want you also to figure out for yourself how it works, to see how it works. Okay. Good. Thank you so much for joining, uh, especially on your birthday. Very touched. Um, and yeah, everyone else also for for continuing to practice, for continuing to be with this, which can sometimes be boring or bring up other things, but we're we're sticking with it. And will be, uh, yeah, the power of the mind is increasing. The power of awareness is increasing. Okay. Oh, one more question. To scan for deeper, subtler sensation. This can be understood as becoming smaller and feeling more deep in certain parts of the body. Yes, yeah, so... It is, um, it is increasing the level of spatial clarity. So how detailed you can spatially dissect some feeling in the body. So for example, the feeling in my arm, to start to spatially dissect it is to recognize the difference between the feeling in the hand from this part from the upper arm and to even go further, okay, there. And I can spatially dissect it and feel separately the fingers, the palm, and then go even deeper. Okay, can I feel a different section of the fingers? Then deeper and deeper. And you can feel very fine sensation. That's the first dimension. The second dimension is to be able to temporarily through time to see that the mo this, this second of the feeling of my hand is different from the next second, is different from the next second. Um, because it's changing every moment. It's just the mind not looking at it properly that assumes this hand to exist as a stable thing to time, through time. Um, so from the level of experience, can I look closer and closer and kind of uh, increase the frames per second that I can perceive in my experience? And the last dimension is also to be able to uh, examine the different qualities. I can qualitatively um, distinguish between what is a sensation which is more heavy, what is a sensation that is more light, what is a sensation that's more tingling, what is a sensation that's more energetic, what is a sensation that's more uh, low energy, what is a sensation that's uh, pleasant, what is a sensation that's unpleasant, and to be able to tease apart these different qualities. What is the sensation that comes from the mind? What is the sensation that comes from the body? To tease apart. Um, just, by, just by looking at it, just by being aware, you don't need to just maybe, yeah, it's nice to have these things in mind, but you don't need to force it. But these are the different dimensions that we can increase the, and the quality of the awareness, the depth of the awareness. And over time, this becomes more default. Um, Good, so, okay, thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Thank you.